To get started on training your dog to stay, you simply need to make sure first that you train a sit that's reliable, good, and a down. Good. If you have that, you're ready to get started on your sit stay and your down stay. There's three components to its stay. That's duration, distance, and distraction. So to get started, I'm simply gonna take a little step away, that's a little distance, from my dog, Walter. If he gets up, I'm just gonna re -cue him into the down and start again. Good. And I'm gonna see if I can move around him a little bit, staying fairly close to him. Good. I'm going to add a distraction to see if I can drop some treats on the floor. And if he remains, that's wonderful. I'm going to give him those treats. He certainly deserves them. And duration just comes along for the ride. So as you work on your distances that you can move away from your dog, and those distractions, even marching your feet, and your dog remains in the stay, you've got your duration just right there along with you. And once you feel reliable that your dog is going to be able to manage remaining in the stay position, you can start putting a cue on it. I like to do something very, very obvious for my dog, like a one finger point. Good. So you add the cue after you've taught the behavior. Ooh, you got a little freebie there. Try that one more time. I'll cue it. I'll move. And I can even teach him to just get up when I say the word, okay. And that's how you teach a stay. Sit is a basic manners foundation behavior that pretty much everyone wants their dog to know. And the good news is it's easy to train if you follow a few easy steps. First, of course, you need your dog and some yummy treats, something that they like so that you can reward them as they get the behavior correct. Take some nice treats in your hand, have your dog in a standing position, and just lure your dog, good, into the sit position. When they get into the sit position, you're gonna to wanna to tell them, using a very crisp and clear marker word, such as, good, that they did the behavior correctly, and they're gonna get rewarded for it. You wanna do a lot of repetition, good, so it's easy for your dog. The movement is quite small. It's just from the nose, up over the head, Good, but hits the ground, you tell your dog they did a good job, and you give them a treat. Step two is you're gonna have a treat in both hands. You're gonna lure, good, with the food in your hand, but you're gonna deliver the treat from your other hand. This way, you can get off of having to move your dog through space with food sooner than later. Good, the food that's in my hand becomes irrelevant. Then you're ready to just, good, move your hand up and back through space, to get your dog into the position. Then let's make sure we put the food away so that we make sure our dogs will pay attention to us and do this on a visual cue without having to follow a cookie through space. Palm up. Good. So I waited for him to do the correct behavior, which was the sit. I didn't want his paws coming up. So if you see something you don't like, just don't say good. Good, and try again. Once you would bet your paycheck that your dog will move into the seated position when you give them a visual good cue, you're ready to put the verbal on. Don't rush that. Make sure that you're ready to bet your paycheck. And then you're going to say the word and then follow it with the definition, which is your visual cue. Sit. Good. If he had not sat, I would have simply given him the visual cue. I don't want to say sit, sit, sit. I want him to do it, <laughs> good boy, the first time. So I'll get him back into a standing position. Sit. Good. With lots of repetition, eventually your dog will simply sit when they hear the word. Sit. Good boy. And that's how you train a sit. Out of all the behaviors you train your dog, come is definitely the most important. It can save your dog's life. Also, dogs that have a reliable recall live more fulfilling lives in that they can go off-leash in safe and legal areas. 
So to get started, you want to consider one very important thing. When you ask your dog to come to you, and they do, there should be a party waiting for them. If you really want a reliable recall, you have to make sure that your dog is really happy when they get to you. So you're going to be rewarding them with really high value, yummy treats, or if your dog loves to play fetch, ball, or tugs on toys, you can use those types of things for a reward too. Just make sure when they get to you that they have something fun at the other end, not anything that they're not too pleased about. So to get started, it's always best to be really defined to your dog. Let's be clear. So I don't just want him to come. I'm going to actually teach my dog to touch my hand so that he has a target to go to, very specifically. So I'm going to show him that I have something that he wants. I'm going to bring those things up and out of view, and then I'm going to present my hand. And what I want, good, is for him to touch it with his nose. So when he does, I'm going to use a very clear marker word. I'm going to say good. And since I don't want his paw, that's very cute. Good. I'm only going to say good when his nose touches my hand. Good. Good. When I think that my dog understands that the behavior I'm training, good, is for him to touch my hand, I'm going to start adding some distance. Good. And then to get even more distance, a fun game that you can play with your dog, good, is to actually, instead of hand feeding them their reward, I'm going to toss it for him. This way I can get him away from me. Good. Good. With a little bit of distance comes a little bit of speed, too. Good. So we don't just want our dog to come to us the first time we ask them. Good. We want them to do it as fast as they possibly can. When I feel confident that he will come when he sees my hand, I'm ready to put a verbal cue on this. I'm going to use the word touch because it doesn't sound like anything else. I avoid using the word come because I feel a lot of people, including myself, say to our dog, come here, come on, and they kind of do or they kind of don't. So I want to have a nice protected word for my reliable recall. Touch. Good. Walter, touch. Good. And now with a reliable recall train, I can start thinking about taking my dog outside into more distracting areas as long as they're fenced in, working on this around distractions, and then only when I feel absolutely certain that my dog's gonna come to me every time, the first time I call them, I can start thinking about letting them off leash in safe and legal areas. You did such a good job. Good boy. Tricks training is a wonderful activity for you and your dog. It improves their ability to learn, and more importantly, your ability to teach. With practice, your timing and your observational skills will get great, and you and your dog will have a lot of fun. A fun trick to train is high five. And we would like to say, if your dog knows paw, they're ready to move on to high five. Paw is the Ginsu knife of tricks training. You get paw, you get high five, and then you're ready to move on to wave. But for now, let's focus on high five. First, I'm going to warm Walter up with doing a couple paws. Good. To make sure his arm is nice and warmed up. Good. And he's thinking about his feet. And he's thinking about making connection with his paw. Good. To my paw. Once he's kind of paw happy, I'm just going to switch the position of my hand a little bit. Good. So it presents itself more like a high five. Good. The criteria for the dog is that when I present my hand like a cup, good, he gives me his paw. And that's a duration behavior. Good. Meaning he should settle his paw in my hand for as long as I wish, within reason. Whereas high five is a contact sport. Good. All he has to do is tap it. Good. When he taps my hand, I tell him, good, and then I follow that up with a treat. And now we've got paw, good, and high five, good. And kids love doing that with your dog. So have fun with your training and get your dog to high five. You ready? Good. We're gonna see if we can work on getting Jack to roll over. 
We're gonna break this down into small achievable steps so he has fun and is successful along the way. First, the starting position for rollover would be that your dog needs to be in a down position, preferably resting on one hip. So since he went down symmetrically, I'm gonna just kind of, good boy, make sure he can lean over nice and comfortably. Right now, he's lying on one hip and that's perfect. So I'm ready to go the next step. I'm gonna take this treat and guide it kind of over his shoulders. Good. And when he achieves the full rollover, I'm telling him good and giving him a treat. If he had trouble with that, I would have just broken that down into more steps, but he's doing great with this. So again, I'm gonna get him into the down position. There you go. Make sure he's leaning on one hip, and good, we've got the roll. He's doing well enough with this that I don't need to put food in my hand right now, so I'm gonna start refining my visual cue. Good, and he's over, that's terrific. And then if I want, I can refine it a little bit more, make a little flash here, and end with a nice finish into a seated position. I think that looks great for our rollover. You did a great job, Jack. Have fun training your dog to rollover. Tricks training is a great way to bond with your dog. And one of the added benefits to training a trick like spin is that it improves flexibility and gives your dog an opportunity for some exercise. To get started, I'm gonna have Walter in a standing position. And then with a treat right on his nose, I'm gonna move it around in a circle, click, and then give him the little treat. Once he's following food readily around in the circle, I'm gonna take the food out of my hand. Good. And then I can either use the word good or clicker to let him know he did it correctly and get the reward. I'm gonna do that one more time without food in my hand. Great. And now I'm gonna start refining my hand signal by pointing. Nice. We went around a circle on a point. I'm gonna see if I can get that a little bit more refined. Yay, good boy, Walty. So it looks a little bit more like a visual cue as opposed to following food through space. Yay, and there's my spin. You did a great job, Walter. So you're ready to get ready on your spin. You just break it down into small achievable steps and you move up to the point where you have it on a visual cue and then when you're ready, you can call it whatever you like. Have fun.